Hey there, people. Today, we're going to write a static Ansible inventory file to learn more about this RHCE objective right here. I think static inventories are pretty cool. They're just simple text files that define what servers we can automate with Ansible. That might be a gross oversimplification of it, though. You can certainly do more than that, like define groups that are made of other groups, and even set special variables for specific hosts, which is some of what we'll tackle in this video. And from what I've seen, the format of an inventory is typically in INI, but it could also be done in YAML or JSON if you really wanted to. And just to throw this in here, there is something called a dynamic inventory that's generated by a script or a program, but we'll just be working with static ones for now. So with all of that being said, let's jump right into this. I have a session here open on the controller node we set up in the last RHCE video. And since we installed Ansible through yum, there will be a file called etc ansible hosts, which is the default system-wide inventory. We can just take a look at that file real quick, etc ansible hosts, and here it is. So the point of this file is, if you don't have your own inventory defined in your ansible.cfg, which we'll talk about in the next video, or within the ansible command that you're running, this file will be the default inventory. Personally, I would really only write in here if the exam was telling me to. This file is very general, and it doesn't offer us that much flexibility. However, it's always there if we need it. Everything's also commented out by default as you can see, so it won't do much, but this should actually encourage us to come up with our own specialized inventory anyways. So with that in mind, I'll get out of here and we'll do just that. We can begin by preparing a directory for our little project. So I'll just make sure something like project zero, I guess. That sounds kind of cool. And then we'll cd into there. And now we can create a file for our first inventory. So usually uh, we would just call this something like inventory.ini, but the name could be something else if you want. But let's just go with standard practices here. Okay. So, just like how the sky is blue, inventories are composed of groups. That kind of rhymed. But, yeah. Now, before we even define a group ourselves, let me tell you that any host names or IP addresses we write in this file will automatically fall under an implicit group called ungrouped. We can start by putting our hosts in this ungrouped zone and work our way up to something more specific. So now that begs the question, what are my hosts? Well, for my particular lab, I have several virtual machines, and the machines I want to use for my managed nodes follow the naming convention app server, and then a number from 1 to 5. This is also their host name, and they belong to a domain called labnet. It's a nice and simple setup. There is a DNS server in this lab network, handled by a VM called netserver, that resolves these app server host names to their respective IP addresses. And when it comes to those IP addresses, they are on an infinite DHCP lease, so they won't be changing anytime soon either. This is handled by the DNS mask service, by the way. Here's a sneak peek at that config file if you're interested. So yeah, uh, I'll just show you the infinite leases down here. And basically, uh, we have two choices here, DNS host names or IP addresses. So we can start by using the DNS host names in our inventory. So to do that, I'll just type in here appserver.labnet. And then I'll yank and paste this a couple of times. There we go. And then I'll just fill in the numbers. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Good. Uh, now we can test this basic inventory by saving our file and running ansible all dash dash list dash hosts and then passing the inventory with the dash i inventory.ini. And there we go. Uh, here are our hosts defined in our inventory, and Ansible shows to have no problem understanding what we wrote. So that's great. And since they're in the ungrouped group, we can get a similar output by running Ansible ungrouped. There we go. And running that, and as you can see, it looks just about the same. Uh, so in case that wasn't clear, 
when you run the Ansible command, the first thing you're going to put is the group that you want to work on from your inventory. You can also name a specific host, but for my testing, it has to belong in your inventory as well. I can just show you that uh, if I replace ungrouped with controller-rel, our host name, that's not going to work. However, if I put in something like app server 2labnet that's going to work just fine. And just for kicks, I'll show you what would happen if we didn't define our inventory with this command. So I'll go back up to the all version, and I'll remove the dash i, and let's see what happens. And so look at that. Ansible is trying to use the system-wide Ansible host file, but it's not getting too far because it's all just comments, which is why it's complaining that the list is empty. All right then we can go back to our inventory file and make this even better. So it's looking pretty boring right now, so let's spice this up, literally. We'll make two groups for our app servers to live in, one called Paprika, and another one I guess I'll call Cinnamon. Hopefully I spelled that right. And yeah, so, uh. I'll just go ahead and cut and paste some of these into these groups. So I'll put um, app server one and app server five in the paprika group, and then I'll put app server two through four in the cinnamon group. So let's see if I can make that work. Cool. So yeah, um, now we have two separate groups. And uh, let's get out of the editor and check on this again. So the last time we checked on our inventory, we ran something like ansible uh, all dash dash list hosts and then passed our inventory file. And that still works, albeit it's showing up in a different order because we defined it in a different order this time. But um, we can also do something like name a specific group inside of our inventory, like Paprika. And as you can see, now we're only seeing App Server 1 and 5. But I want to show you all a better command to check out your hosts. So uh, if you run ansible-inventory and then dash dash graph, this is a really helpful option, and then pass your inventory file, this will show you a hierarchy view of your inventory and how it's actually sorted out. What's really cool is that we can see the members of both groups, Paprika and Cinnamon, at the same time. So uh, this gives us a nice view of what's going on and how our inventory is actually getting parsed out. Pretty useful stuff. Now let's make this even spicier. We'll go back into our file and we'll create a parent group down here called Spices. And when you create a parent group, which is a group composed of other groups, you need to put a colon and then this specifier called children right here uh, in your group ID. And then we would just define our existing groups. So that would just be paprika and cinnamon. Okay, cool. But we're not done yet. We can consolidate our inventory even further to squeeze a bunch of host names into just one entry in our file. For example, here we have app servers 2, 3, and 4. And the only variable between these lines is the number, and it's a consecutive one as well. So replacing this with a range would be a good fit. Here's how we can do that. We can remove all but one entry in this group, like this, and replace the number with square brackets, and inside of those square brackets, we'll put 2 colon 4 to match for a range from app server 2labnet to app server 4labnet this will do the same thing that we had before but we're saving the potential effort we would have to use to type a long list of similar host names so we can go and back out of this file and run ansible inventory dash dash graph again and this will show us how our groups played out so as you can see here we have the spices group and we also have our cinnamon and paprika groups inside of there. Pretty cool.
Now let's try one more thing here, which is host level variables. So going back into the file, for example, I could create an entry up top in the ungrouped zone called localhost. And of course that refers to our own machine. And something you would commonly do in this situation is pass a variable like ansible underscore connection equals local, like that. Doing this will allow us to target our own system and run the Ansible instructions using a local connection method instead of the default, which is SSH. Pretty useful stuff. We can also set variables for entire groups. So I could go down here and write cinnamon um, colon bars, like that, and specify an example variable here. So I could just call a variable like package name and make it equal something like Lua, I guess. Sure. And now this variable would be accessible when we use app servers two through four, which are part of the cinnamon group. And yeah, one more thing that I'd like to show you is how to set the SSH port to access the servers. So by default, it's gonna be port 22, of course, but let's say that one of our servers SSH daemons listens on a non-standard port. Then what we can do is assert the port number in two different ways from what I found. So one way is with the ansible underscore port variable, and we can set it equal to something like 2222 if that's what it listens on. Um, another way is just to put a colon after the host name and then put the port number right there. So I could go ahead and state the obvious that app servers two through four listen on port 22 by doing that. So we can save the file and check our Ansible graph command again. It's not gonna look too different uh, because all we did was just set variables and stuff, but I just thought that showing this was important at least um, because it seems like it would be a curveball that they could throw at us on the exam, you know, like setting the SSH port number or doing local commands on our control node, things like that. And after all, it is on the ansible.com documentation site, so it's all fair game for them to do that. Okay then, so it looks like we're in a good place, but before I close the video, let's just hypothetically say that our DNS server went kaput. And we have no choice but to use IP addresses now. So at the current moment, our inventory is completely reliant on host names, DNS host names. But um, let me show you some quick examples of using IPs in our inventory instead. So I'll make a new file called inventory2.ini. And we'll drop the spices analogy this time and just make two groups, prod and develop. For production and development here and uh, these groups will be children to a parent group that we'll call app servers right and so we would write prod and devel in here and now all that's left to do is to fill in the IP addresses so I'll pull over to another tmux screen and I'll show you a little script I wrote to resolve the IP addresses from our app server domain names. So it's in scripts, and I called it getNameIP.sh. And there we go, here's our IP addresses. And I mean, I made it pretty simple. Uh, it's just going from 11 to 15 for app server 1 to 5, respectively. And here's what the script looks like, by the way, just in case you were curious. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you read some of the comments, it's kind of funny. But anyways, let's go back to our inventory number two and bring this to life. So for prod, we could put in something like 10.0.0.11 and 10.0.0.15. And for devel, we could put 10.0.0. square bracket and then 12 colon 14 for 12 through 14. And um, we could also put the port number for SSH by doing a colon here and putting 2222 because that was one of the quirks with App Server 1. Uh, and yeah, this is looking good. So we can test this out by saving the file and running the graph command again on inventory 2, of course, this time. 
And there we go. It looks a little bit similar to what we had before, except with different names and using IP addresses. And I mean, that about does it for this video. I hope it was as helpful for you as it was helpful for me to make it. Stay tuned for the next video where I talk about the Ansible CFG file. And as always, thanks for watching.